patience. Five H to forty. It says, "For you were once, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. For the mind of God is the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them." It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead. Yo, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born blind. His disciple asked him, Teacher, who sin caused, who sin caused him to be born blind? Was it his own or his parents' sin? Jesus answered, His blindness has nothing to do with his sins or his parents' sin. He is born blind so that God's power might be being seen at work on him. As long as it's day, we must do the work of him who said you night is coming. When no one can work, well, I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After he said, there is Jesus part in the ground and made some mud with his feet. He got the mud on man's eyes and told him, go and wash your face in the pool of Simon. So the man went to his face and came back seeing his neighbors then, then and the people who had seen him begging before. He is asked, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some say he is the one, but others say no, he isn't. He's just, he just looks like him. So the man himself said, I'm the man. How is that? You can now see, he asked him. He answered, the man called Jesus made some mud and rubbed it in my eyes and told me to go on to the synagogue and wash my face. So I went and as soon as I washed, I could see. Where is he? He asked. I don't know. He answered. They, they took the, the Pharisees and the man who had been blind. They did the day that Jesus made the mud and cured him of his blindness was Sabbath. The Pharisees then asked the man again how he had received his sight. He told them, he put some mud on my eyes and I washed my face and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, the man who did, who did this be from God, but for he doesn't not to be in the Sabbath, no others, however, say, How could a man who is a sinner perform such miracle as this? And there was a division among them. So the Pharisees asked the man once more, You say he cured you from the blindness. Sorry. Well, what do you say about him? He is a prophet, the man answered. The Jewish authorities, however, were not willing to believe that. Believed that he had been blind and could now see until they called him his father and asked him, Is this your son? You said it, that he was born blind. How is it? Then, that how can now see? His father answered, We know that he is our son and we know that he was blind, but we do not know how it is that he now is able to see. Now do we know who cured him of his blindness? Ask him. He is old enough and he can answer for himself. His parents said this because they are afraid of the Jewish authorities. However, sorry, who had already agreed that anyone who said he would believe that Jesus was the Messiah would be expelled from the synagogue. This is why the parents say he is old enough to ask him. A second time they took back the man who had been born blind and said to him, promise before God 
that you will tell the truth. The losers, this man was cured. Cured you is a sinner. I do not know if he is a sinner or not. Am I the man of God? One thing I do know, I was born blind and now I can see. What? How did he do to you? I asked him. How did he cure you of your blindness? I have already told you the answer and will not listen. Why do you why when do you want to hear it again? Maybe you too would like to be saved. <coughs> they insulted him and said, You are the fellow you are the fellow's disciple, but we are Moses disciple. We know that God spoke to Moses as for the fellow follower. However, we don't even know where he came from. The man answered, What a strange thing that is. You do not know who comes from, who comes from, but he given me of my blindness. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He doesn't does listen to people who speak him and do what he wants them to do. Since the beginning of the world, nobody has ever had anything given. Given straight to a person born blind, giving so giving sight to a person born blind, unless the man came from God, he will not be able to do that. The answer. You are born and brought up in sin, and you are trying to teach us, and they expel him from the synagogue. When Jesus heard what had happened, he found the man and asked him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man answered, Tell me he is so that I can believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have already seen him, and he is the one who is talking with you now. I believe, Lord. The man said, and kneeled down before Jesus. Jesus said, I came to this one to judge, so that the blind should see, and those who see, who see should become blind. Some Pharisees who were there with him had him saying this and asking, him, sure, we do not mean that we are blind to for one of us. Jesus asked, if you are God, then you will be, you will not be guilty, but since you, are, you come but you can see, this means that you are still guilty. That's your Go straight to the word of God. And the theme of Today's message is the light of the world. Nuru ama muangaza wa dunia. Tunapo karibia kukumbuka kuzaliwa ama kukumbuka kuteswa, kusulubiwa wa Yesu Kristo. Ni bizuri tukapata kuangalia mambo kata ambayo yako miongoni mwetu. When we talk about the right, the right of the world, and the light of the world is Jesus Christ himself. Yesu mwenyewe ndiye nuru ya dunia na yeye ndiye mwangaza katika dunia. Nataka kuanza kwa kuangalia maneno ambayo yako katika kitabu cha Yohana, katika kitabu hicho cha Yohana ambacho tumesomewa. Kitabu hicho kimesema mambo mengi kuhusiana na mtu huyu ambaye alikuwa ni kipofu. Mtu huyu ambaye alikuwa kipofu kwa miaka mingi Maandiko yanasema kwamba alipokutana na Yesu na alikuwa ameishi kwa muda mrefu katika giza. Giza ambayo huyu mtu aliishi ndani yake ni giza ya kutoona. This man was not able to see. He was blind. So for many years he lived in that state without seeing. And that was a kind of darkness that he was in. Hangeweza kuona mwangaza wowote. Hivyo alikaa katika giza ya kutoona yale ambayo alikuwa anafanyika. Nataka kusema ya kwamba ukiwa katika giza kuna mambo mengi ambayo yatakuwa na hukumu kwako. You will have a lot of difficulties. <coughs> Kama umekutana na mtu ambaye haoni, unajua kwamba ana ma- mashida nyingi. Anahitaji msaada. <coughs> Anahitaji kusaidiwa. Anahitaji kutembea kwa mkogojo ama guiding stick. Na mambo mengi lazima atakuwa dependent. Akitaka kuuliza kile kinafanyika. So this gentleman lived in darkness, in that kind of state that he needed help from people. He had to use a guiding stick to walk. 
he had to be dependent on other people just because of this mere fact that he was not able to see. He couldn't see. Tunapozungumzia kuhusu mambo ya nuru ama mwangaza. Lazima kutakuwa na giza mahali ambapo nuru lazima ije. And darkness has been associated with many things. You see anything that does not please God is darkness. Anything that doesn't go in line with the word of God that is darkness. And you see Christ has no business with darkness. Giza inafananishwa na inalinganishwa na vitu vingi ambavyo si sawa katika macho ya Mungu. Darkness has been associated with death. It has been associated with the other world. Imel husishwa ama imefananishwa na dunia ya giza. Imefananishwa na fujo, imefananishwa na vitu visivyo sawa. Vitu vyote ambavyo ni kinyume, negative things, harmful things, evil things, issues to do with despair. Zote zimelinganishwa na giza Haki nayo ina mambo mengi ambayo yamelinganishwa nayo ama mwangaza Mwangaza unalinganishwa na vitu nyingi Katika kitabu cha Mithari mwangaza unafananishwa ama unalinganishwa na haki na inalinganishwa na jua la asubuhi Mwangaza ni kitu cha muhimu katika maisha Sisi kama mwae kipata wakati ambapo umeingia kwa nyumba na kuna giza. Wakati wote unajua umuhimu wa mwangaza. Unajaribu kutumia mikono kutaka kujua pale ambapo switch iko, utafuta mwangaza ama kujaribu kutafuta kiberiti kwa giza. You will have difficulties. That is when you shall you know the importance, importance of light. Mwangaza ni kitu cha muhimu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Na maandiko yanasema ama yanazungumzia leo kuhusu nuru ya dunia. Ambao Yesu Kristo mwenyewe ndiye nuru ya dunia. Ina maana ya kwamba dunia iliishi katika giza kwa miaka mingi. Kabla Yesu kuja, dunia iliishi katika giza kwa muda mrefu. Wanadamu waliishi katika anasa. Wanadamu waliishi katika giza ambayo ilikuwa na mambo mengi ambayo hayakuwa sawa hadi Mungu mwenyewe akawa mbinguni akaona ni vema amtume sasa Yesu kuja kuokoa na kuokoa dunia Yesu aliyetumwa ndiye nuru ya dunia aje alete nuru katika dunia Mtumishi mmoja wa Mungu ambaye anaitwa Bishop Pius Mwero alikuwa na kipindi ambacho alikuwa na nacho katika moja ya televisheni zetu na alikuwa na ongeze ama anazungumzia kuhusu kuna nuru gizani. You know where darkness is nuru nuru kianza kuingia mahali. Na mfano mzuri utaona asubuhi ikiwa unaamka asubuhi wakati kuna giza wakati jua linachomoza. Ndio utaweza kuona vile ambavyo mwangaza unaondoa giza. Unaondoa polepole giza inaondolewa polepole mpaka unaona mwangaza umeingia. That is how it works. Kwamba nuru inaondoa giza yote katika maisha yetu. So Yesu alipoingia katika dunia na akawa yeye ndiye mkombozi na anakuja kuleta mwangaza katika dunia. Mwangaza huo ulipoingia maisha yakaanza kubadilika katika dunia. Na watu wakaanza kuishi maisha tofauti. Na ndio sababu wengine wa wanafunzi wa Yesu wakaanza kumfuata wakitaka kufuata hii nuru kwa sababu nuru ina mambo mazuri na nimesema the light light serves as a symbol of life nuru inalinganishwa na uzima nuru inalinganishwa na furaha happiness nuru inalinganishwa na prosperity mafanikio nuru inalinganishwa na vitu ambavyo ni kikosao 
Hakuna bali mwangaza umefananishwa na vitu visivyo sawa. That is why as why in the Bible the Bible says that arise and shine for your light has come. When light comes things change. Nuru ikiguzukia mambo yanabadilika. So Yesu akaja duniani ambaye ni nuru ya dunia na watu wakaanza kubadilika. Na ndio sababu mimi na wewe tumebadilishwa kwa sababu nuru imetuzukia. Nuru ilipokuja ndani yetu ikaondoa giza maisha yakabadilika. Lakini kinachoonekana sasa ni kwamba wanadamu wakati mwingine wanakubali giza inaingia katika maisha. Na ikiingia katika maisha mambo yanaanza kuwa ama yanaanza kwenda mlama. Right has been symbolized as a symbol of immortality. Nuru inalinganishwa na maisha ya milele. Anyone who lives in light mtu ambaye anaishi katika nuru ama mwangaza anachukuliwa kwamba kama mtu ambaye ataishi katika maisha ya milele. Sisi tuliyompokea Yesu ambaye ni nuru ya dunia, maandiko yanasema kwamba tutaishi maisha ya milele na milele. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Giza nalo linalinganishwa na pia maisha mengine ya milele lakini katika taabu na masumbuko. Light has been symbolized or it has been taken as a symbol of holiness. It has been used as a symbol of holiness. Knowledge, goodness, wisdom, grace, hope and God's revelation. In the book of John 8 where we read John 8 I don't know whether we did it read 8 John 8 but we can read John 8 John 8 12 It is when Jesus was debating with the Jews He had conversations with the Jews And Jesus told the Jews that I am the light of the world Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of light So meaning that without Jesus we live in darkness because whoever follows the light will not live in darkness Mali ambapo mwangaza upo hawezi kukutana na giza ama stima ikiwasho hapo utaona giza. Hautaona giza. Mwangaza ukiwekwa giza zinaondoka. Kwa hivyo kufukuza giza ni kuleta mwangaza. Giza tulisema ishara yake ni ya mambo yote ambayo hayamtukuzi Mungu. Mambo yote ambayo hayampendezi Mwenyezi Mungu. Yote yanalinganishwa na giza. So giza zilizoko katika maisha yetu ambayo Mungu anasema ameshatuma nuru yake ambayo ni Yesu lazima iondoke katika maisha ili nuru ikae nuru haiwezi ikadumu haiwezi ikakaa mali ambapo kuna giza jaribu usiku leo ukienda washa kiberiti uone kama nuru ita, kama giza itakaa pale giza linafukuzwa na mwangaza bwana Yesu asifiwe Kurahisisha ninachosema ni kwamba ikiwa unataka kuishi maisha ya nuru inamaanisha lazima tukubali kukaa na nuru Tukikaa na nuru na nuru yenyewe ni Yesu Kristo basi giza linaondoka mara moja katika maisha yetu Kwa sababu Yesu hawezi akakaa pamoja na giza Bwana Yesu asifiwe In the book of 1 John 1:6 This is what the Bible says that if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness we lie and do not live with the truth So anyone walking in darkness is and says or claims to be walking in the light then they are lying Kwa sababu Nuru haiwezi kaenda pamoja na giza. Verse 5 of the same 1 John 
says that God is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. Hakuna giza ndani ya mungu. Hakuna giza ndani ya yesu. So, inatubidi tutembe katika mwangaza. Inatubidi tutembe katika nuru. Kwa sababu, ndani yake ama nuru wakija, hakuna giza yoyote. Hakuna kuishi katika tabu wakati nuru ipo. Nuru ikikujia mambo yanabadilika. Na ndio maana tukasomewa katika Zaburi Zaburi 23 Psalms 23 Those scriptures were read by the reader of the service and they are very powerful scriptures to us. The psalmist uses metaphor of a shepherd's care for his sheep in Psalms 23 from verse number 1 onwards. And the Lord or David says The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still, still waters. He restored my soul. And he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Verse number 4 of Psalm 23. The Bible still continues and says this. Even though I walk through the darkness valley I say darkness represents bad things darkness represents places where you cannot be comfortable so David, David says even if I walk even if I walk through the darkness even if I walk through the dark valleys I will fear no evil No, he said he will fear no evil because he knew that he already was with the light. The light who is Jesus Christ, the light who is God was with him in the form of a shepherd. So he says, I'll fear no evil. For you are with me. You know he had that guarantee. For you are with me. And then you are Lord and staff. They will comfort me. Verse five: You prepare a table before me. You know, God prepares a table before you, before your enemies. <laughs> Meaning that even when uh, they are hard, you are going through hard, hard moments or hard times, still Mungu anajidhihirisha kuwa Mungu. Katika hiyo hali, Mungu anafanya mambo yake. Watu wanaona kweli kuna Mungu ndani yake. And David says you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you remember what was happening with David at that time. David was David was a shepherd or he used to be grazing. Ona analisha wanyama wa babake. Ndio sababu akaweza kutumia mifano hiyo. Jambo moja unagundua na watu wa Mungu ambao waliishi miaka hiyo ni kwamba mambo mengi waliokuwa naelezea kuhusu Mungu walikuwa natumia hali zao za kawaida. Walikuwa natumia maisha yao ya kawaida ile walikuwa nafanya. Na wanaleta Mungu kukuonyesha vile Mungu anafanya kupitia kwa maisha yao. Daudi alikuwa anaishi akiwa mchungaji wa wanyama poli. Alikuwa anatunga wanyama wake. Na basi ndio akatumia mfano wa kuonyesha vile ambavyo Mungu ndiye mchungaji mkuu. Ingawaje yeye anachuma kondoo, pia Mungu ndiye mchungaji wa kondoo ambao ni wanadamu. Na hawa watu walitumia mifano hiyo ili watu kuelewa vizuri neno la Mungu. Wale waliokuwa wavuvi wa samaki walitumia uvuvi wa samaki kuonyesha kazi ya Mungu. Wengine wakaonyesha Yesu akiwa katika berekebu na vile ambavyo alishinda shetani kwa kuweza kutembea juu ya maji hali zao hizo ndizo walitumia kuonyesha ama kuhakikisha kwamba wanadamu wanaelewa vile Mungu anafanya kazi Paulo mtume anaonyesha 
vile ambavyo unapaswa kuishi kama Mkristo kwa katika kazi yake ya kushona hema na hata katika masomo yake walikuwa wanatumia hizo haya so Daudi hapa anatuonyesha yeye kama mchungaji wa kondoo kuna mchungaji mwingine ambaye anamzidi yeye ambaye sasa yeye hata hajapopita katika bonde la uvuri wa mauti na unajua kile ambacho Daudi alikuwa anamaanisha ya kwamba anapochunga wanyama wake kuna sehemu ambazo anapita katika jangwa kuna sehemu ambazo anapita kule msituni sehemu ambazo ni hatari na nasema hata katika sehemu hizo za hatari hata waogopa mabaya kwa sababu huyu mchungaji ako na yeye pale na gogo lake na fimbo lake na unaona bado anatumia gogo na fimbo fimbo ambayo anatumia mchungaji bado Daudi anaitumia kama mfano ili uelewe uelewe walikuwa analeta hadithi ambazo tunazielewa ama mambo ya kawaida unayoyaelewa anayaleta na kuyalinganisha na vile ambavyo Mungu anafanya ili tuelewe vizuri so gogo lake Mungu na fimbo yake Daudi akasema kwamba zitafariji So though I walk in the valley of shadow of death Ingawaje atapita na wanyama wake mahali ambapo hata kuna simba wanaokwala ama wanamaliza ama wanavamia wanyama wake bado hapo Mungu atamuokoa hata bado ako na yeye Na hivi hivyo ndivyo ilivyo kwetu sisi ambao tunamwamini Mungu Even when we walk in darkness and we say darkness symbolizes so many things things that don't go well with God Still the light is there to shed light in our lives and to make sure that our lives are different. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Want to mention a few things from that book of Psalms as I conclude. You know there are some hidden truths in the book of Psalms 23. One thing that we realize is that David's victorious God was never distant he was not far from him mungu wa daudi hakuwa mbali na yeye alikuwa karibu na yeye na ndio maana daudi hakuogopa maana alijua mungu wake hayuko mbali akimuita anakuja akimwalika analikwa anakubali mwaliko huo na anafanya mambo namba 2 Our secret our secret to peace when death threatens is a growing certainty of God's ever present care. Kule kuogopa kwetu kuhusu mambo ya mauti na kifo kunaondolewa kwa sababu tunajua ukweli wa kwamba Mungu bado na kuchungwa kwetu ama bila ambao Mungu anatuchunga bado yuko hapo ili atutunge. So hatutaogopa. Kwa sababu najua kwamba kuna rescue. Kuna mtu ambaye atatuokoa. Unajua wakati ambapo unajua kwamba kuna msaada inakuwa rahisi kwako katika maisha. Unajua kwamba nikifinywa kwa na hii ninaweza nipendua nifanye hivi. It's very important for a human being. And that is what we are saying today that even if we feel like we are pressed even if we feel that sometimes like we are cornered we still have an avenue we have a god who cares and he's just around yeye ukimuita anakuja the number three is that in times of plenty in times of plenty or in times of need god is good and worthy of our trust in times of plenty and in times of want god is still faithful god is still worthy he is still good and he still have our trust you can trust god even when you are in want you can trust god even when you are you are in despair yani unaweza kumwamini mungu hata wakati ambapo hajakufanyia mambo wakati ambapo bado unangojea atende bado unaweza ukamwamini Mungu wakati ambao bado unaona ni kama amecherewa 
bado unaweza ukamwamini Mungu ya kwamba Mungu atafanya jambo Number four, the role of a shepherd jukumu la mchungaji or the role of a shepherd is to lead his sheep to green pastures jukumu la mchungaji yeyote yule jukumu lake kubwa ni kuhakikisha kwamba wanyama wake kondoo wake ngombe wake mbuzi wake amewaelekeza mahali ambapo kuna nyasi nzuri and that is the same with our shepherd in heaven his role to us is to make sure that he leads us in green pastures he leads us where there is plenty he leads us where we can get what we need for us to be sustained his role again the role of the shepherd is to protect them or protect protect the animals from the predators hilo ni jukumu la mchungaji kuzuia wanyama wake ama kulinda wanyama wake tokana na mbwa mwitu tokana na wanyama wa kule mwituni ambao wanaweza wakadhuru wanyama wake that is the role of a shepherd so the role of a shepherd in heaven it is to actually protect us from evil and from the predators from our enemies Bwana Yesu asifiwe hilo ni jukumu la Mungu yeye ambaye ni mchungaji mkubwa na yeye ambaye ni mwangaza na nuru jukumu lake ni kutuchunga tokana na wanyama wakali tokana na adui ambao wanatuzingira so that one David knew it was a hidden secret in the book of Psalms 23 he knew very well that i should not care i should not be in want because i know the role of the shepherd that i'm talking about his role is to make sure that this sheep or his sheep are well fed and number two, his sheep are protected or the animals are protected from the predators from the enemies from the people who are actually seeing them as free and finally the role of the shepherd is to make sure none of the animals none of the animals is lost none of the animals is lost all goes astray ni jukumu la mchungaji kuhakikisha kwamba wanyama wake hawajapotea wanyama wake hawajaadhirika tokana na na adui wao mchungaji yote ambaye anajukua jukumu lake ama anajua jukumu lake ifika hapo jioni ama atokapo malishoni kabla hajaondoka katika area hiyo sehemu hiyo ni kuangalia kwamba wanyama wanyama wake wote wako na wanapowarudisha kule holini anahakikisha kwamba wote wako ndani iwapo atapata kwamba kuna mmoja ambaye hayupo ndani ya sisi jukumu la mtungaji kurudi kumtafuta huyo aliyepotea na maandiko mahali pengine yanatuambia kwamba kazi ya Mungu ambaye ni mchungaji mkuu yeye huwa anatafuta huyu kondoo mmoja aliyepotea akiwa amewacha akiwa amewacha zizini wale 99 anaenda kumtafuta huyu mmoja aliyepotea so it is the role of a shepherd to make sure that we as the flock we don't go astray we are not lost naye huyu kondoo ambaye anapotea aonapo mchungaji anaposikia mchungaji akimtafuta mchungaji yote na kondoo ambaye anaelewa mchungaji wake akisikia mchungaji kule huwa anafanya namna gani huwa anajificha huwa anajificha ama unasikia anaanza anaanza kutoa sauti ili asikike pale hapo nani mwahi kwa mchungaji hapa kuna mtu kwa mchungaji umechunga kondoo umechunga ngombe unajua vile ambavyo huwa anafanya kazi wakiwa kule kama wamepotea kule ndani wakipotea huwa wanafanya namna gani wananyamaza kule ndani wakijua kwamba masaa yamefika na haoni wale wengine anaweza fanya namna gani 
kutafuta namna ya kureza haramu kuhakikisha ya kwamba kutafuta kama kuna mtu anamsikia ama kuna mtu ambaye anaweza kumpata mahali alipo lakini wengi wetu kama kondoo tunapotoka na tunapo eh, tunapoenda mlama mara nyingi hatutaki hata kutafutwa hatutaki hata kutafutwa tunajificha tusije tukatafutwa sijui kama unaelewa ya kwamba wengi wetu tukipotea katika nyumba ya Mungu hatutaki hata kutafutwa ukijua unatafutwa hiyo siku badala hata kama nikufua nguo iwaje ikae unaweka kafuri ukazunguke kwa sababu unajua leo ni jumapili wanaweza kunitafuta si ndio kuna uwezekano wanitafuta so hiyo unaweka kafuri leo ni siku ambayo ya ushirika ambao wanaweza kuja area yetu na wanaweza wanaweza wakafikiria kujua niko wapi unapotea but it is the role of the shepherd to make sure that all the flock are within or they are where they are supposed to be they don't go astray as i finish i want to say these words we are talking about the light and the light itself is Christ Jesus who came and brought the light to you today you are happy because the light has come in the book of isaiah the bible says arise and shine isaiah 60 arise and shine for your light has come nur imekuzukia kwa hivyo inuka uangaze nataka uelewe Unaangaza kwa nini? Unaambiwa uinuke uangaze kwa nini? Unaangaza kwa sababu tayari umeambukizwa nuru. Nuru imeingia ndani yako. Na ikiwa ndani yako unaweza ukaangazia, unaweza ukamulikia wengine. Sina mara ngapi? I don't know how many times we were we were actually taken that role to show the light to others. Wakati mmoja Yesu alipoponya yule alikuwa amepangawa na mapepo alifikiria kwamba ni vizuri aendelee kufuata Yesu kwa sababu Yesu amemfanyia mema Yesu akamwambia enda enda ukaambie watu enda ukawaambie kile umefanywa go and tell people in your village what has happened in your life and i finish with Ephesians 5 7:14 where we read Now that the light has come let us therefore walk in the light Now that you receive the light I am urging us let us walk in the light And the Bible says this Therefore do not be partakers with them those that you are with formerly in darkness but now you are the light in the lord walk as children of light for the fruits of the right consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth so if you are in the right ukitembea katika nuru matunda ambayo unazaa yatajulikana kama kuna nuru ndani yako kama kuna mwangaza ndani yako kwa sababu matunda ambayo utazaa ni hayo ambayo tumeyanena there will be goodness in you there will be righteousness in you and there will be truth in you try to learn what is pleasing to the lord and do not participate in the untruthful deeds of darkness but instead even expose those darkness issues verse 14 for this reason for this reason it says for this reason for the reason that we have talked about now that the light has come to us we should walk in the light And for that reason awake awake or wake up you will sleep in arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you Christ will continue being seen in you shining if you agree not to sleep if you agree not to continue being in your comfort zone but come out in that cocoon 
and arise and shine. Because your right has come. And let that right, Jesus Christ, shine through you and shine on other people using you as a vessel. Psalms 23, the last verse. The last part, verse in Psalms 23 says, the last verse, that is Psalms 23, verse number 6. Number 6, it says this. That is the last verse I am going to be reading. It says this. These are scriptures and words that we, we are used of confessing and proclaiming. And they are very powerful to us. If you walk in the light and you allow the light to shine through you and shine on other people, then surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night.